So, uh, first of all, I would like to start the discussion with like, uh, what is debt restructuring is? Is that moving towards solvency situation, uh, path from insolvency to solvency? How would you uh, define yeah. this? Uh, before we uh, discuss about the debt restructuring, uh, I would say we need to understand the concept of debt sustainability because uh, that is why we need uh, something called debt restructuring actually. So when it comes to debt sustainability, debt sustainability means simply uh, our revenue or our income or let's say our, the reserves that we have right now in our hand is not enough to repay our upcoming debt servicing payments, right? So if that's the case, you can't repay your debt, then you are in kind of unsustainable situation. Then uh, we would say some sort of, I mean, that sort of situation as debt sustainability, sorry, unsustainability of debt, right? So this is a highly technical area. So I'm trying to say something in a really very simplistic way. So if there is an unsustainable amount of debt for a country or a, for a bank or a financial institution or any other company or something like that, then there are a few options that we can go for. Because uh, with an with unsustainable amount of debt, we can't survive, we can't go forward. So we need to do something for this unsustainable debt. I mean, we need to reduce this debt amount or however, reach to some sort of level of sustainable debt, right? So not uh, debt sustainable, debt, sus debt sustainable is not the only way that we can handle this sort of situation because there are certain other ways also. The, the, the main thing that we can do is like, we can increase our inflation, which is not a popular way of handling this sort of situation because when you increase the inflation, it can affect day-to-day -day lives in a greater with a greater impact right and also what uh, happens with the increasing inflation is we all know that when there is a high inflation which means it affects to the real values then uh, 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 real values will uh, reduce and then it will uh, come up to the sustainable amount of sustainable level, level of debt amount right so this situation this or this option is not valid for sri lanka right now because of we all know that uh, right now also we have a huge, uh, I mean, high level of inflation and also it really affected economy in a great extent. So because of that, we have to keep that option aside. So the other side is that debt restructuring thing. And when it comes to debt restructuring also, Kilini, there are several things. Certain countries go, going only for the domestic debt restructuring, certain countries going only for the foreign debt restructuring. And also for uh, certain countries, we have to do the both. Right now in Sri Lanka, with the uh, with the huge, with the, with the with, because of the severity of our issues right now in Sri Lanka that we are facing, we have to do the both debt restructuring. See, so when it comes to debt restructuring, the simply what we are going to do is since we have a huge debt and also our debt is not sustainable, what we are doing, what we are going to do is like we are going to readjust this debt to the level that we can repay it. So there are certain ways that we can do it, right? The first one is we can reduce the principal amounts of our debt. Let's say uh, I have given uh, the, the, the government, let's say uh, 100,000 debt. So go what the government is gonna do is we can't pay this 100,000 to you. What we can do is we can pay only 80,000, something like that. And the second thing is we can extend the maturity period. We call it as reprofiling. I mean, let's say I have I've taken a bond for like uh, two years, but because of the uh, issues that we have now, government not, is not in a position to repay that debt in two years. So uh, they would ex uh, extend this maturity to four years or six years or something like that, right? Then the third day is that we can reduce the interest payment. Let's say I've uh, given the government the debt for like 10% uh, of interest. So these are like hypothetical figures. I'm just trying to explain the scenarios. So government can say, okay, uh, the situation is this, we can't pay you 10% uh, of increase, sorry, interest. What we can uh, do is like uh, giving you 5% of interest. Or, or we can do a combination of these three. So <laughs> with the combination, those are the four uh, ways that we can restructure our debt. Yeah, I think uh, I gave you the answer. Work. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, so moving towards the need for the debt restructuring process. Uh, so currently, as you mentioned very correctly, Sri Lanka is kind of uh, in a severe debt crisis due to 
high level of external debts and also currently uh, like uh, Sri Lanka is having a total debt amount of like LKR 25,518 billion and that include both domestic and foreign debts. So with that, like uh, Sri Lanka was uh, significantly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and also with the current crisis like uh, Sri Lanka is having exacerbating cost of world medicine and other issues. So like uh, I think like uh, so uh, also the country's overall debt to GDP ratio also has been steadily increasing over the recent past. So several creditors have like defaulted uh, our country. So like debt restructuring is seen as a plausible solution uh, to improve country's fiscal consolidation and also improve economic stability. Uh, so with that, what are your on like need of uh, the debt restructuring for yeah. Sri Lanka. Uh, the, the, what are your the, the thing is this, so uh, to answer your question, I think uh, we need to take some, I mean, I can give you two sort of answers. The first one is like, I can give you a really, really technical answer by proving that why we are not, uh, why, why our debt is not sustainable or something like that. The other, on the other hand, I can, uh, by taking certain macroeconomic variables, I can explain you uh, why our debt is unsustainable. So I'm going to take the second part because I think it will be more valuable for our uh, viewers. So if you take very simple and few economic variables like our, let's say, our trend deficit. So we have been talking about this trend deficit for like so long now. And if you take the past couple of decades, uh, I mean, I mean, twin deficits means uh, there are certain accounts that we are talking about when it comes to macroeconomy uh, always, right? The first, uh, the one, one of that is like uh, budget deficit. The government revenue is uh, far below than the government expenditure uh, in Sri Lanka for sure. And also our BOP balance of payment and in balance of payment also, if you take the current account, our uh, export income is not sufficient to repay our, uh, let's say, import expenditures. So we have two deficits in these two accounts. So, and, so uh, given this situation, anyhow, we have to uh, find out a way to finance these deficits. So what we have done was like the only available option that we have is like taking debt. So we have done that for like quite so long. And because of this situation, and also since we haven't taken any measures to, uh, you know, repay or uh, settle down these deficits so our debt amount has been piled up so now we have like as you said 128 uh, percent of gdp debt of 128 uh, percent of gdp right which is a huge huge amount and on the other hand so uh, because of that we need to go for a re restructuring because otherwise we we can't do anything right now right because at least we know last year we couldn't even uh, took care of our uh, we couldn't even take care of our imports necessities, fuel, medicine. So we had that sort of issue because we don't have enough uh, export revenue at that time. And also because of several reasons, I'm not saying uh, COVID is the only reason and COVID is one of the biggest reasons for that. And also certain mis uh, policy implications and certain policy actions and a lot of stuff. Uh, our reserves decreased. So we had like, I think, 2 billion reserves last time with the Chinese swap, which we can't uh, spend as we want. So because of these, these reasons, and also especially if you take uh, our debt servicing payment, right? Until 2017 and until 2018, 17, 18, I guess, we could have, I mean, our debt servicing payment was like up to uh, 2 billion US dollars. But afterwards, it increased to uh, 4 to 5 US dollars, which is not, which, which is a huge amount relative to our import earnings and also the foreign reserves that we are earning per year, right? Due to these, these, these reasons, we don't have any other option option right now other than debt restructuring. So I, I don't know, even though central bank acknowledged that we can't repay our debt, I think uh, even though central bank didn't do that, still we have to, we could have uh, taken certain measures to uh, deal with our debt because it was, a, it was about to coming a, a huge issue. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, also, when it comes to like uh, right now, Sri Lanka has been approved for its 17th uh, 
program and extended fund facility and generally this imf would provide the support to like the countries in debt distress like uh, sri lanka and also shows the path for solvency so how would you see the role of imf in this debt restructuring yeah, exactly. process i at think thirini it's a really good question uh, that we need to understand because you know what i believe as a person is uh, this uh, this problem is ours right so we all as citizens need to find out a solution for this problem so then it is it's a really necessity to we all understand what is going on right now in our economy and we contribute to that as much as we can and also there are certain criticisms towards the current government and the previous governments and the imf also and whether this is the path that we need to take and all right so if we keep everything aside if we need to come out this problem we need to understand the depth of this situation that is why we need to talk about and here i mean uh, there's an ongoing discussion about whether the imf was the alternative the only alternative that we had at that time or something like that and i do believe that imf is the only available option at that time uh, mainly because in last uh, let's say uh, 16th time the 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 16 times that we went for the imf the issue that we have was like uh, only the external sector several parties right it's a it's a really complicated uh, situation because we have multilateral creditors we have bilateral creditors also we have commercial creditors so there are a lot of people out there so we need to go and talk to each of them and see what we can do and also we need to admit that this is our issue this is a sri lankan economic issue so uh, uh, even though they have uh, given us credit uh, given us credit uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they need to Uh, suffer from this but anyhow uh, the, the the this is a really big uh, painful experience for them also so that is why i think uh, uh, that is where why we need to concern about imf because of that because without imf i don't think there is any other party that we can go for in a situation like this especially because uh, since we need to discuss with lot of parties about our debt restructuring th- there should be a, some sort of a stage that all our i mean sri lankan parties and also the our creditors can meet and discuss about this because this is a, as i said this is a really painful experience for all of us so what uh, normally happens is like imf giving that platform and also when it comes to other creditors also uh, if they want i mean if they i don't know what will happen because right now we have like started the process but not we, we haven't started restructuring the debt it will coming up in next couple of months but when it comes to our creditors also they need to feel that we are really committed to do that this this debt restructuring thing so the final purpose of this debt restructuring is the restructuring thing is like achieving the debt sustainability and finally ultimately the have a, a good development and also that uh, we will be able to uh, repay our debt so that is what they also want our creditors also want so in that sense they need some assurance uh, to to, to feel, they need to feel that we are on the right track so that is what imf do in this situation they are giving us some sort of a program so even though they give us or not that is what we need to do when it comes to uh, of course when it comes to this sort of problem so that is why imf is needed actually because they are like giving us the stage or platform to discuss with our creditors and uh, get our country back on the track <laughs> yes of course so i to agree with you like imf would give us the right path uh, of uh, to solvency like how we can like uh, go for a fiscal consolidation so with that uh, i would like to uh, more focus on uh, the uh, restructuring process in detail how should it be looked like 
because right now sri lanka owes money to the kind of countries like india china and also for the multilateral institutions like cb and also a uh, world recognized institutions like world bank and imf uh, so also to multiple bond holders so with that like there is a pressing need uh, for attempt to reduce measures and also providing a certification on the debt repayment and also getting an advisory board or panel into the discussion of this uh, debt burden uh, kind of management of debt so according to your point of view how is the process uh, uh, look like uh, i mean uh, the process is like uh, first of all we need to admit that it's a too complicated process especially we have uh, both foreign and domestic debt restructuring so until recent i think we have only focused on foreign debt restructuring but uh, we have been discussing this all over the places that uh, domestic debt list the thing was coming to us very fast at that time so right now i think uh, central bank has already acknowledged that we are going to restructure our domestic debt so uh, the 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 process would be like i I've, I've told you that uh, the 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 main four things that we do when it comes to the restructuring so there will there should be a, maybe a, a either a reduction of the principal amount reduction of the interest rate or extension of the maturity period or uh, i would say the mix the combination of all four of these but the thing is right now that government has uh, so the central bank has announced that in april or april to may what they are going to do is like they are going to uh, make the plan uh, about how they are going to deal with the domestic debt and in the meantime they are going to uh, start domestic debt restructuring and also in the after may i think they are going to plan about the foreign debt restructuring and anyhow both the process have to be in before the august i guess before our first review in august or september as i can repeat remember so uh, uh, according to the details out there uh, as according to the central bank has announced what they are going to do is like uh, they are going to restructure bilateral debt and also the commercial debt when it comes to foreign debt and also uh, we normally consider our multilateral creditors as senior creditors like world bank adb imf and these uh, cases we normally call as uh, multilateral creditors and we d- we don't normally restructure their debt but on the other hand making the things complicated as i've seen in the news and a lot of articles that china has requested to uh, restructure these multilateral debt also so i haven't seen any uh, response from the government side or central bank side to the, to, to 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 this but i don't know what will happen with that but right, right now government is focusing on restructuring this uh, bilateral and commercial creditors debt of bilateral and commercial creditors and when it comes to domestic debt what central bank has uh, so there are if, if if we consider the tools the the, the, the tools so we can and divide it mainly to two categories the treasury bonds and treasury bills so what they are, what the central bank has announced was like uh, i think there are uh, around 4000 us dollar us uh, billion dollars uh, treasury bills when it comes to our debt i mean with regard to the domestic debt so from that uh, two third of debt are owned by the central bank so they have said that they are going to restructure that amount maybe they will convert it to a treasury bond treasury bill into a treasury bond treasury bond is a, 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 a debt tool with a, a longer maturity period and treasury bill, bill is a, a shorter maturity period uh, uh, tool <coughs> so uh, that they have clearly said and when it comes to treasury bonds so that is the tricky part because what they have up to now said was like they are going to implement a, something implement something called a domestic debt voluntary domestic debt optimization so uh, we are not still clear about what they mean by this because if you take the composition of uh, treasury bonds i think uh, around 40% of the debt are owned by the sri lankan bank and again owned by another 40% is owned by the epf and etf and around 9 or 8% is owned by the insurance companies and other financial companies so what they have done is they have uh, they haven't talked much about this part of the debt what they have done what they have said was like 
they are going to implement a, a voluntary debt optimization. So I think we are about to see what will happen because of uh, for sure uh, during next couple of weeks, we will be able to see what is going to happen. Right now, according to the details that we have at the moment, uh, I can say that the government, central bank is more focusing on T-bills, the amount of T-bills that they are owning, the central bank. And uh, yeah, the other part, the T-bonds part will be announced or we can see very soon what will happen there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, moving to the next uh, part of our discussion, which is about debt sustainability, as you have previously also like explained. Uh, so, this debt sustainability is like kind of a main objective of debt restructuring process, and this involves like, as you mentioned, like trying to balance out between the debt servicing and also economic growth. So, I would like to know more ideas on this aspect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So debt sustainability, I mean, uh, as I uh, uh, talked, so debt sustainability is my, like uh, the, the, we, are, we are trying to achieve the level of debt that we can repay. That, uh, the, so we are trying to increase our capacity to repay debt. So that is what debt sustainability means, right? So uh, IMF has given us certain uh, targets regarding debt sustainability. So the first one is like, uh, there should be 95% uh, of debt to GDP ratio. Yeah, we, we should reach a 95% of debt to GDP ratio by 2032. And also, we need to have our gross financing need by 13% of the GDP during, I think, after the program 27 to 2032. Uh, 20, 20, 27 to 2032. And uh, when it comes to Forex, uh, uh, repayments, I think, again, it should be like 4% of the GDP and something like that. And also, on the other hand, I think during the program period, during the IMF program period, we need to reduce our debt servicing. Uh, I mean, we, we, have to, uh, we have to reduce 17 billion of debt servicing during this period. So those are the things that we should achieve during this 10-year uh, time frame, 2022 20, to 2032, and that is how uh, that sustainability is going to be achieved according to the IMF program. Okay, understood. And also, uh, just in a similar note, uh, just to add into your point, also I think like governments should balance out between the revenue and expenditure side as well, uh, like to bring down the GDP growth, and like, uh, so, so to increase the GDP growth and bring down the debt to GDP ratio. So apart from the debt restructuring process, uh, government should uh, like really, uh, focus on monetary and also domestic yeah, exactly, policies to exactly. aid this process. Uh, so with that, so with that, uh, what are your thoughts on like impact of debt restructuring on the economy? Uh, because right now, uh, the, if this debt restructuring process is being successful, it can help reduce the country's debt burden and also improve the country's fiscal consolidation and improve economic stability and also if this is not being successful that will like harm to the country's uh, credit ratings so what do you think about this yeah uh, uh, honestly speaking Kirini, i don't think we have an alternative here so we anyhow we have to uh, uh, go through this issue because otherwise we will end up in a very severe situation i mean severe than the experiences that we had in last year so Given that I don't think we are in a position to like uh, explore alternatives and do some sort of things, so when it comes to the impact on the economy, so uh, honestly, the the information available right now outside is not enough to uh, give a good image about the impact because right now the process has been started as announced by the CBSL, but they have not. Uh, told anything about how they are going to implement this, how we are going to exactly do this or something like that. So in that case, it's kind of tricky and it's uh, not suitable also to uh, hypothesize things and hypothetically explaining things to people like this is what's going to happen and scare out people about this whole process. So what I can say is like, this is our problem and every one of us have to make certain sacrifices so we need to be ready for that so i think on the government side uh, we should see some sacrifice too and we should see the commitment from the end actually and also as you said 
we sh there should be a huge uh, restructuring process. I mean, not only the debt, but also our government policies, our, the, the, our SOEs, there is an issue, and our, as you said, the fiscal consolidation. And right now, and of course, there will be a huge impact on people. And uh, also, uh, as IMF suggested, that there should be a cash transferring system. And I think the initial stages have, initial steps have been taken already. Uh, I've seen that uh, people also have seen that I think there's a, some project going on as called as Aswasuma. So they are trying to collect the details from the uh, poor households and see what they can do. And because when it comes to our cash, current cash transfer programs like Samurdi and all the, there are main issues. The first one is the, uh, the, the beneficiaries are not specified. There are certain beneficiaries who are not supposed to be beneficiaries. And also, on the other hand, the issue that they have is like the amount is lesser, which is not quite enough to survive with the given crisis and everything. So there should be more focused and rationalized system of cash transfers in Sri Lanka. And uh, I think as a part of the IMF program, we are working, I mean, government and the central bank and the uh, necessary officials are working on that. So other than that, uh, Thilini, I don't think uh, uh, right now we can, I, I don't think I can tell anything about the impact this will take, this will happen on the economy. I think for sure, once once the, the oh, construction yeah. and everything started, we can talk more about this. Yeah, of course, I there. Also moving towards the future outlook, the factors that can be affecting for a sustainable debt restructuring process. So as per my understanding, as you also very correct, the success of debt restructuring would depend on uh, the several factors like how the government uh, implement economic reforms like SOE reforms, trade reforms, and also uh, social protection um, aspects. So also countries' ability to attract foreign investments. And also that's again depends on global economic factors as well. Uh, so along with that, I would like to know your thoughts on yeah. that aspect. Uh, as well. The thing is actually what I uh, used to say is like, the issue that we have is very simple. The, the, the issues that we have is really, really simple. The, the complexity comes with the implementation and the solutions, right? So the issue that we have, we all know the issues and there's a dead issue and we have a issue with the uh, budget, we have an issue with the DOP and we, 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 we have good understanding about that, right? So the, 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 the question is with the implementation or the solutions for this issue. Right. So, and also when it comes to solution, we, it's a very simple solution. What we need to do is like, we need to increase our reserves. We need to increase our exports. We need to increase our foreign direct investments. Right. So the issue that we have is like how we can materialize these concepts, how we can implement these concepts. Right. If we say that we can, we need to expand our exports or increase the export earnings. It doesn't mean that we can do that very, you know, in a day or month or year. It's a huge process, and also the uh, right now, given the all the all issues that we have uh, have now, it is not that easy to uh, do these things. And also, what I believe is like so. Uh, this is this is a process that we all need to take part. So that is the crucial thing. I think that is what we need to take to the general public also. Yes, we all admit that we have issues with the certain political parties. We have issues with the governments. Uh, I, uh, we, we, people criticize governments and everything is true. Uh, no, no, uh, no, no argument with that. There are huge issues with Sri Lankan context, right? But still, we, anyhow, we need to overcome these issues. So that is what the problem is. So we need to take part and we need to understand the situation. And I, I'm not saying that we need to support the government without even criticizing it or arguing with it. But if there is something uh, that government take right, we need, to, we need to take part on that because this is our problem. And also if the government is misguided or misleaded, then we have to do something for that too. But uh, the main thing is, uh, we, we need to create a discussion and we need to inform the public about what is going on and we need to make sacrifices as people and everyone, I mean, including political parties and everyone. We need to make sacrifices and we need to aware of what is going on and we need to overcome this issue by our own. Yeah. Yeah. 
that makes sense actually. Uh, so as a country, uh, the government and also people and all the stakeholders in this like this current situation, they should bear all the sacrifices and move forward with this uh, process. So in a similar note, I would like to make like, uh, again, like government should focus more on economic reforms uh, that can increase country's revenue and also decrease our expenses. And also, for instance, as you also previously mentioned that we have to prioritize uh, the SOE reforms, trade reforms, and develop a fiscal scope uh, for yeah. social protection as well. Uh, so we, that has direct impact on uh, country's economic stability. Also, as we mentioned earlier, Sri Lanka needs to ensure uh, like credibility and accountability. Then we can attract more foreign investors and we can attract more FDIs to the country and increase foreign reserves and that may lead to like a more secure economy in future. Uh, so uh, I would like to know concluding remarks. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have much to tell. As I said, I think uh, this is a process that we all need to be aware and uh, need to be understand really well. And uh, we have to, there should be, uh, I mean, we may need to make certain sacrifices. And uh, we may, I mean, the, the best thing that we can do is being aware of what is going on right now in the country. And, you know, uh, there are certain uh, mistakes that we have made as a country. So I, I think the IMF program, the, 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 the targets or the, the suggestions that IMF program had made needs to be achieved, not only for the, or not only, not because IMF has suggested it, but if we really need to overcome this issue and have some sort of a developed level and some sort of economic growth and enjoy some economic prosper, then we may need to uh, implement these things, even though IMF is there or not. I think we all need to do that. Yes, absolutely. So I think uh, this brings to the end of our discussion today. Uh, so thank you very much, Kamishka, for joining to this uh, discussion and provide your valued inputs, uh, insights. I think like audience got much, much understand what is this process and how should it be look like and also future. So thank you so much uh, to our audience as well. So also I would like to remind our audience to follow up on all our social media platforms and stay updated with, with more chats like this and also the other works uh, that we do. Yeah, so again, thank you, thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice day. See you.